Hey guys, so one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to be sharing with you guys some encouraging Bible verses that we've been reading. And so I wanted to share with you today, John 15 verses four and five. Jesus said this, Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. That word remain repeats a bunch of times in this chapter and another, a lot of verses or a lot of translations say the word abide. And the whole idea here is that we need to constantly, continuously be hanging out with Jesus. How do we do that? We do that by reading his word and by praying. And my prayer, my hope for you is that even though we're isolated and we're separated physically right now, you guys will be digging in and growing in Christ by spending time with him through his word. Abide in Christ, remain in him, continuously hang out with Jesus. That's my hope, that's my encouragement from John 15 verses four and five. Hey guys, some scripture that I recently found encouraging is found in Luke chapter five verses four through six. And it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And I love this scripture because it reminds me that I can do things my way and I can work as hard as I want, but a lot of times, it just won't work out because I leave God out of the picture. But when Jesus steps in and I allow him to work in my life, that's when things start to happen. So Simon and his friends were working hard all night long. They didn't catch a single fish because they were fishing their way. They thought they knew what was best. They thought they knew how to handle this situation. And when they finally let God in, They were doing things God's way, and that's when things started to happen. So if you're struggling with anything at all, maybe it's because you're doing things your way. Instead, try doing things God's way, because a lot of times we think we know what we want, but ultimately, God knows what we need. I found that encouraging, and I hope you do too. Hey guys, I have a verse to share with you today. It will be helpful no matter the situation. It's a good reminder. Um, especially during times like this, whether you feel like a lot has changed or a lot has stayed the same, this is a good, helpful verse, uh, especially since we're probably around a lot of people that we're normally not around. So it's 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Hey guys, good morning. I get to go over with you the message that Pastor brought with us this weekend. If you haven't seen it already, I encourage you to go and watch it. It was super encouraging. Pastor Jeremiah went over Mark 4 where Jesus calms a storm and boy, was it super relevant and super encouraging for us during this time. And I cannot wait to go over with you. The The message was called The Perfect Storm. And man, it, it was awesome. He, he posed this question of what do we do when the perfect storm comes to our life? And man, it, it was such an encouraging just sermon for us during this time. And I want to be able to just go in that with you and just, um, and just see what we can take away from it. So join me. If you have your Bible, we're going to be going through Mark chapter four. And it's one of my favorite stories um, when Jesus calms the storms and in, in the gospels. And I just cannot wait to go through that with you right now. So Mark chapter four, if you have your Bible, open it. If you don't, no worries. Let's go ahead and just read it together. All right. So Mark chapter four, verse 35. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats um, followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. Highways were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. 
Jesus was sleeping on the back of the boat with his head on the cushion. So here's this huge storm, man, the, the boat's almost sinking. And, and I love that the Bible says that Jesus was just sleeping on the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. It was his head on a pillow. And, and the, the Bible just says, amen, Jesus was just chilling. He was asleep. He was catching that rest. The disciples were, were, were frantic and they, they woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves. So Jesus just woke up and he straight up just walked over to the boat and into the waves. And, and he said, silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked him, why were you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. They, they asked each other, they said, who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Man, <laughs> that's crazy. What, what, what I love is, is man, there is this huge storm. And, and there's actually a Greek word in, in, in this passage that says that um, the storm basically was like a hurricane. Um, that's one way that it, it's translated. And and, and it, uh, the pastor was saying last night that another way that another writer writes it is, like, is that there was like an earthquake happening beneath and the, the surface and, and it was shaking all around. And the, the text actually says that there was waves going into the boat. It was this crazy storm. And there is Jesus just sleeping on a cushion. You see what we can take away from this or what, what this passage is, is, is pointing at is that the likelihood of storms going to happen in our lives. There are going to be storms in our lives as well. Just as there was a storm for these disciples, there's going to be storms for us. Storm, sudden storms could happen to us. And, and what's going on is even though the disciples were in a storm, Jesus was right there with them. The, the, the beginning of the passage starts with Jesus saying to the disciples before they even got on the boat, he, he told them, he said, hey, let, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. Jesus was right there with them. They were following Jesus. You see, oftentimes I think a misconception is that even though we're following Jesus, there's not going to be any storms in our life. Clearly, that's not the case. The disciples were literally right next to him. And yet this big storm came and overtook them. You see, because storms, they're, they're not a result of, storms are not a result of, of disobedience. Storms aren't a result of us doing something wrong. It, it, it's not always like that. Sometimes storms just come. Sometimes things just happen to us. But can I encourage you guys this morning that even though there's, there's storms in our life and even those things may get rattled up, even though waves may seem like they're coming in and, and shaking our boats, that, that the presence of Jesus is still with us. You see, because Jesus was right there with them in that storm. And, and he woke up and, and he simply just commanded the storm to silence and to be still. That is the power that God has for you and for me. That he could just wake up and, and, and while sleeping and say, hey, it's cool. I got this. Storms, be silent. Guys, right there, that that, that is... a. Uh, that is not only a sign of, of God's power, but also his, his presence in our lives. Yes, God is so powerful. God is, he, he created the earth into existence. He created the entire universe. Our, our, our God has power. And oftentimes we, we know that and, and we remember that, but, but we also got to remember is that God's presence is right there with us in the middle of a storm. Countless times, there's been times in my life where, where things get tough and, and I, I know it's about to get crazy. And, and yes, I know that God is powerful, but what I often forget, and the enemy, they, they, they love to mess with our memory and, and make us forget things in the middle of, of when it's going tough. But one thing that sometimes I forget, if I could just be real, is that the presence of God is still there with me just as much as when it was going easy, just as much as, as when I felt like, you know, things were all right. When everything was going good. God's presence, just as much as he was with me in those good times, he's also with me in the storms. You see, because we could remember of his power, but what's also so, so important for us to remember is that his presence is there no matter what. And that, boys and girls, that, that gives us a peace. That gives us a peace that, that we know that God is a gracious God to us through those storms. That God is faithful with us. That he's powerful. 
And ultimately, he loves us. And he's not going to leave us. Hebrews 13, 5 says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Pastor put it this way. He, he, he said that, that peace is not the absence of stress. <laughs> and I love that because there's so many times where, where I can get stressed out or where there's storms that come in and I could just try to shake it off and say, well, I'm going to be peaceful about it. And while that might be a cool thing to, to, to shake things off, and that's certainly not bad, but, but what's most important, Pastor said this, he said, peace is not the absence of stress, but the presence of our Savior. What's most important is that we can rely and know that we have peace because Jesus is peace. Jesus is right there with us. And because Jesus is right there with us, what's amazing about these storms in our lives is they actually point us to him more than at the storm. Storms aren't, storms aren't supposed to get us wrapped up in, in that moment of, of, of the waves crashing, if, if we could say that, or in the moment of, of, of such disaster and destruction that's going on at the time. But, but storms are rather, they're, they're, they're built to, to point us towards Jesus when we have that faith. You see, that's one of the greatest things I believe that as followers of Christ, as, as Christians, that we have against opposition is knowing that, man, this storm, this challenge, this obstacle, it's not built. It's not built to, to tear me down. No, 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 no. It's actually a, it's an opportunity. It's, it's a setup to, to point towards Jesus, to point towards his glory, to point towards his power, to point towards the fact that he is there for me and that he could save me. You see, when, when we trust in him, when we depend on Jesus, the opposite of fear during those storms happen. Faith, <laughs> faith starts to, fi to, to fire up. Faith is found in those deepest moments. And boys and girls, that is what drives us towards Jesus. That, that faith that can be found in those moments, that faith that, that can be found when we know that God is right there with us. And the last thing I want to hit at is uh, at these promises that are there during the storms. And, and the first one is that, that we can expect to be through storms. And the disciples went through it themselves. Jesus was right there with them. They were following Jesus, and yet they went through that storm. And there is this parable that, that Jesus spoke that I love, and it, it, it talks about um, building your house on sand or building your house on a rock for when storms come. Because surely when, when, when you build a house on, 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 on sand, it's like if you were to build it on the shore, um, right there where the waves are at. If you just build a house at the beach, right there in Coronado Beach on the shore, when that storm comes and when those waves come crashing in, man, surely that house is going to be knocked over. They're going to be tipped over. It's going to be washed away. But if you built your house on something solid, something strong, something that doesn't move, if we built our house on a rock, that would last through the storm. Man, if we built our lives and our faith and our trust and our joy and our happiness and everything in between, if we built that on who Jesus is, on his promises for us, guys, when storms come and storms happen, there's nothing. There's nothing that's going to shake them. Next promise is, is, is that, that the Bible says that, that Jesus is there with us. I, I mentioned it, Hebrews 13, 5, that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. God is with us no matter what. The next promise is that faith drives out fear. And that God's word the Bible assures us to a safe landing. You see, because the passage started off with, with Jesus saying, hey, let's cross over to the other side. And yes, there was that storm that was with them in that side. But then the very next chapter, the very first verse says, so they arrived at the other side of the lake to where they were going next. You see, they started off at one point <laughs> and sure enough, they got to that destination. Boys and girls, I just want to encourage you that that is exactly where we're at. We, we start off on one side, but there's a promise that no matter what's going on in the middle, no matter what storm comes, no matter what ops, no matter how high the waves seem, no matter how scared we may get, no matter how terrified it may seem at the time, no matter if, if we think ourselves that, yeah, God, you're, you're just sleeping, Jesus, you're, you're just comfortable, why aren't you doing anything? No matter how intense those times get, Jesus is there with us. He has complete control. He has complete power. But most of all, his presence is there with us. And we are to turn to him because he's going to get us to that other side. Guys, that is so encouraging. That gives me so much hope. So today, I just want to ask you, what does that storm look like for you? 
Shirley, we're all in this together in this quarantine and, and what's going on, the, the, you know, all this craziness that's happening. But, you know, there, there might be some other things that are going on. There might be some other substorms, little storms in our lives that we can also point our attention to and say, God, but you're also there with me in that. So I just want to encourage you. Think about it. Reflect on it. And maybe you could reevaluate re the way you're looking at that type of storm or perspective in your life because, man, the Bible, it's clear that Jesus is there with us. Let's go ahead and pray. God, I thank you so much for God just being able to go into your word. God, just being able to, even though we're all separate right now, we can still gather around a TV screen. We can still gather around a phone. God, and we get to open the word that you've given to us. God, we get to still read and, and God reflect and, and be so excited and so stoked on the promises that you've given us. God, we, we get to see the, the storms and, and the challenges and the obstacles that, that people went through times when you were on this earth and how you got them through that, God, and how in that we can, we can find hope and, and, and trust that you're going to get us through these current storms today as well. God, because we know that it's not the size of the storm. It, it, it's not the power of the storm, even God, but no, it, it, what's most important, God, is that we look to you during the storm. Only God, that you are the master over everything. God, that you calm winds, you calm seas, God, and you spoke this world into existence. So surely you could speak that storm away, God. You could, you can, you have power over those things. God, I pray that as we go into God these these next days, these next weeks, may we realize, Father, that that you ultimately are peace, our joy, and our salvation. God, may we forever put our hope in you. In your name we pray. Amen. See you guys. Thank you so much, Christian, for sharing that message with us. Hey, we hope that you guys will take this message and you'll apply it to your life this week. Yeah, we hope this has encouraged you. We're all in this together as a crew family. If you have not been able to join in on any of our small groups, that's a great way to still stay connected and encouraged with us. We have multiple small groups that meet together virtually every week. Yeah, that's right, Stacy. Hey, we actually have a few pictures of small groups that met together online this week. It is so important for us to remember to stay connected during this time. Remember, social distance doesn't mean spiritual or emotional distance. We're here for you. Exactly. And you know what? We're still having some fun. We're excited to be doing our lip sync challenge. If you guys haven't heard it already, we're doing the song Friend Like Me from Aladdin. We want you guys to be a part of it. Yeah, check out the song and record yourself singing it. You can upload it to Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, or you can upload it to your YouTube account and send us the link. You can send us the link at crew at shadowmountain.org. All right, crew, that's all we got for you today. Just know that you guys are loved. We are praying for you, and we hope to see you guys this Wednesday. 